Today on Corporate Review, join us as we explore innovative technologies, cutting edge solutions, and timely discussions from leaders across the globe. This is Corporate Review. Welcome to Corporate Review, I'm Jackie Bales. 1.4 billion of our planet's 5.8 billion inhabitants don't have access to drinking water or energy. Now, while wind and solar energy is readily available, the main problem has been storing that energy. Well, here today we have John Gamble, CEO, and Mary Hosen, Vice President of Business Development for Enerdynamic Hybrid Technologies. They're here to discuss how their company has developed a groundbreaking solution that provides immediate and effective sustainable energy for people who need immediate help. Welcome to you both. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. John, first of all, what's been preventing so many people in the world from having access to energy? The main reason people have had no access to energy is because the cost of energy has been too high and it's been too, too expensive to deliver that energy to the people. Hmm. Mario, how is EHT, or Enerdynamic Hybrid Technology, solving this problem? What have you come up with? Well, Jackie, all of us, we know the, the, the two says how to eat an elephant, piece by piece, right? It's, it's a very simple solution. 1.4 billion people without energy is a huge problem, it's an elephant. So we create something to bite this problem. You take this panel, you go to Africa, you, you drop on the ground, and this system starts to make energy immediately, which means energy, which is, means life, which means the future for the family, for the developing countries. This is our approach to this problem. Hmm. Well, in this on-location field report, we take a look at EHT's solutions and the people whose lives are changed forever by their solutions. Historically, wind and solar power have not been realistic options for the immediate installation of power in less developed countries due to the expense. Villages would have to wait years until a grid could be built to provide them with much needed power. Enerdynamic Hybrid Technologies has developed a revolutionary solution that provides wind and solar energy for villages off-grid and can be installed in an hour. What makes EHT unique is the fact that they can deploy anywhere in the world within an hour. Most other companies or competitors in this market can't make that claim. EHT's products can be deployed in either an off-grid or on-grid solution. They combine solar energy, wind energy, and battery storage into one package. What they see from their competition is a highly fragmented market in which solar panel providers, wind energy providers, and battery providers are all working separately from each other. EHT brings that energy solution into one package, a micro-utility that includes solar, wind, and battery working together for maximum efficiency, maximum energy production, and deployable anywhere in the world at any time. Enerdynamic Hybrid Technologies provides a smart, immediate, and sustainable solution made with Canadian quality and reliability that creates the much needed energy to forever change developing nations around the world. EHT's technology can be deployed anywhere in the world where there is a need for power or to reduce the cost of power, specifically in mature markets where there would be an offset to rising electricity rates. In developing markets, EHT becomes the de facto power source or power solution where there's a lack of infrastructure or grid infrastructure. EHT's technology is deployable within an hour of arriving at its location. So, John, tell us more about your EnerCube and EnerPole solutions. The EnerCube was designed for small micro-utility solution, which means that we create power from one kilowatt to five kilowatts. The EnerPole was designed for larger scale utility, which would mean up to 10 kilowatts of power. And how much does it cost, John, to bring light and water to a village in Africa then? Well, Jackie, to a village in Africa, the EnerCube solution would cost around 3,500 U.S. dollars for a 1K solution and up to, you know, seventy-five to $8,000 for a 5K system. You know, $3,500 doesn't sound like a lot for those of us in America, but for a family in Africa, it might be. Well, for a family in Africa, it, it may be. 
but for, a, for an entire village that they can pump water, they can provide lights for schools, for people you know, at night where there is absolutely no light whatsoever, it is huge. Hmm. So Mario, how long does it take to install one of these systems? The beauty of this system, of our system, is we have power in one hour. Our motto is power in one hour. We combine three different technology we have used in our countries, wind generation, solar generation, and battery storage. We put all together, we combine in one cube, it is an energy cube. Our R&D, they develop all the huge job to make everything simple in order to be an IKEA system concept to be ready to be installed in one hour. We ship one box from Canada to wherever is, is necessary in Africa or South America, and this box contains everything which in one hour can produce energy, can produce life. So it's producing energy in one hour, and it is so simple that you can literally build it yourself like something that you get from Ikea. Is that what you're telling me? Exactly, because we are shipping this cube to the developing countries which the, the, that people need something which is simple, easy to use, easy to install, and easy to maintain. Because this cube produces energy for 25 years. This cube has inside 25 years fuel free of charge because the sun and wind inside the system. It's like a generator. If you buy the small generator from the market, you have to put the gasoline to use, right? Mm -hmm. Our cube is a generator with inside the fuel, the gas, ready for the next 25 years. And must be simple to use it. Interesting. My name is Aliu Jargaso and I am the chief of this village. The village is called Lumbi Sanarabe. It is a very old village that was passed on from our grandparents, who inherited it from their grandparents. The closest health center, Lumbal Balaji, is about 28 miles away. When we are faced with a crisis, for instance, someone being sick or a woman being pregnant, then we have to use carts to get there. During the rainy season, we don't have any way out. As soon as the rain hits the ground, no one is able to leave the village. Since we do not have electricity, we are in very big trouble. We have to use torches as light and look around to find something missing. When we need to charge our cell phones, we use batteries from a flashlight, tie those up with a piece of rubber and attach a wire to it until the phone is charged enough to make phone calls. Getting electricity here is very valuable to me. Whoever wants to get a freezer will be able to and will have access to cold drinking water. Whoever wants to set up a TV or charge their cell phones will now have the opportunity to do so. It is a great thing because you are getting something that you can't get on your own. We are very, very happy about it and we thank you for it. Once we get access to electricity, people like me who want to work will be able to. I can make ice and ice cream and walk off of that. Our children will be able to study. We are happy that we will have access to electricity. We want to have electricity because we need it. It is useful and there is a lot to gain from it. Because once in place, if we want to work using it, we can. We can make ice, ice cream, and we would look like the whole world. We would look like those people, those places that have electricity. Our kids will finally have a place to study because it is hard to study in the dark. We are very happy. The whole village is happy. Men, women are all excited about having electricity. We could only be happy that with the help of God, we have finally electricity. We could only be happy about that. We will be able to set up speakers and do other things in that sense. The village will look like cities from all around the world. We will be able to see the U.S., France from here, and all the continents around the world. Mario, my heart is full of love for you. You will always occupy a big place in my heart. I want to welcome you in Lumi. Even though you are here for a very short visit, you are a part of us now. Once home, make sure you tell your people that you are from Lumi and that you are our village chief. I am naming you Mario, chief of Lumbi's village. I thank you for bringing electricity to the village 
and its surroundings. I can affirm you today that no one will ever use the firewood again. Instead, we will use the solar power. So, John, can your solution benefit people who are living on the grid? Yes. If you're living on the grid, our solution can go between the grid and the battery so that if the power goes out, the battery kicks in and you still have power in the house. Mm -hmm. And this is our solution uh, that we're starting immediately in Senegal. We're doing a rooftop project that will allow the customers to be able to have wind, solar, and a battery at their house. We're in Senegal now, every night between six and 10 o'clock at night, the power goes out mm -hmm. almost every night. Mm -hmm. From now on, they won't have to worry about that whatsoever because their system will automatically, as soon as the lights go out, it will kick on and their battery will take over. During the day, when they're not at home, the power will go back to the grid to help the country make sure that they have extra power that they can use for an industry so they don't have the brownouts that they have every day. So you're talking about the government of Senegal really following up on this initiative and doing this for its people, it sounds like. Absolutely. It's not only the government of Senegal, it's actually the president of Senegal and his wife. They're, they're committed to help the people to get renewable energy into the country so that their people can live better, but also that they can create their economy and move their economy forward. Because the main problem is they need power today. As Mario has said, you know, power in an hour, but you need power today so that they can start and do industries. You can't wait until you do large scale utility projects, which could take three to five years. And then you have to build up your grid infrastructure. By using the grid that we have today in Senegal, they can start and push back or alleviate some of that problem. So 125,000 homes turns into 250 megawatts of power. Mm -hmm. saving government in infrastructure. Let me ask you also, Mario, how much money can an average house or an average village save every year if they're using the NRQ? Jack, you get two kinds of uh, saving. One is a saving for the housing. As John said, we can cut 50, 70% of the energy bill for each housing, mm -hmm. which means a lot of money for who every month they have a problem to pay the bill, so they enjoy this free energy. Another saving is what about the people that are still living in the dark? Mm -hmm. What about people using the diesel generator to, uh, they spend two dollars per liter of gas to pump in the water from the village? What about this saving? This is not price about this because this solution can save it to them the life. They give them fu future and the hospital, for example, we are uh, already installed one system in Ghana. One small hospital in downtown of Accra, they spend 2,500 euro per month for energy, plus another 500 euro per month for diesel when there's no energy. So we reduce their bill for 50%. So they have 1,500 1, euro or $2,000 to use to in, in develop their, their solution for the people, to build new hospital. Hmm. One, one village they spend, for example, in Senegal, 1,000 to 200 euro per month for, for pumping the water using the diesel uh, generator. We use our system to reduce 50% of their energy. We donate to them 500, 600, 800 euro per month to improve their life. Hmm. Amazing. Now, John, would this system work in locations that don't have much wind or don't have much sunshine. We've designed our system that it can be tailored to wherever we place it. If you don't have a lot of wind, you add a little more storage. If you don't have a lot of sun, you add a little more wind. So it's flexible. You know, whatever the terrain or the environment that we put it in, it can be customized. What about the desert? In the desert, you always use that for pumping water. We work right now with a company that does water pumps and we're designing a system that we can use solar to provide the, the water pumps with the electricity. So it's not just about pumping water either in the desert, correct? 
No, Jackie, in the desert there is a lot of sun during the day. So what we do, we increase the storage of the energy by the battery, which is also more economic today because five years ago it was extremely expensive. Now it's much more low cost. We take more energy during the day. In the night when the modules, the panel are sleeping, the battery delivers the energy for pumping the water and also giving the energy for the lighting of the houses. Hmm. This is a good combination. So overall, Mario, who can benefit from the solutions from your company? As we say, the energy is the life for many people around the world. So everybody with their need energy for life is benefit this our solution. But the government, because they can have a low cost for the energy, the hospital, because they can deliver the help to the people, the family, the kids. But who is living in the dark? I've been in Africa at eight o'clock in the night and I see the village which everything is dark. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very impressive position. They work and they live in the, in the dark. We can deliver them the, the light. And also my kids, your kids, our kids can benefit in, the, in this point. Because a poor, young and, and angry man or kids in Africa, his future is also moving and depending on the future of our kids. Mm -hmm. a, a, poor, a poor guy, a poor, simple and ignorant kids in Africa is a good target for the fanatic radical organization. Because they can be radicalized since their, their, yes. their situation is so exactly. bad. This is the right target for them to take them on, on board. So our common future comes also for the future of that guys. Hmm. Wow. So we need to give them life solution. We have to give them uh, education and then he can be in our side. We are invested billions to, to fight against this kind of uh, radical organization. We are also making our world to beat these people with the education of that people, mm -hmm. giving the life. Mm -hmm. Electricity will help us with many different things. We will spread the news easily. Everyone will know where to turn to in case of emergency. Electricity will help in cases of illness and in keeping our cell phones charged. People will have access to the news. They will be able to see whatever is happening on TV, be informed, and know what actions to take. Having electricity will help in preventing fires in homes. Firewood is our only form of light. Accidents and fires will drastically go down with the electricity in place. We have been using the firewood for generations. When we were born, it was already being used and being fired this way. When the flashlights came out, we started buying them and using them to light up the rooms. When a child sees an adult doing something, they try to imitate. This is the way it is done. You do this and this. So when you are in a hut, made out of straw, it catches fire easily, especially after sparks start flying. As an example, a child goes in a room and there is a curtain. So the child does not have a clue and takes this in a room. No parents around, then a spark flies and falls on the curtain or on the hut. The room catches fire. Everything is then lost. When a pregnant woman comes to term in the middle of the night, since we are far from the clinic, we look for a cart to take the woman to the clinic. If she gives birth on the way with no difficulty, then we bring her back. Sometimes we will make it there on time. It depends. You've gone through roads that are not paved. You have to travel a good 28 miles to see a decent road. We got on horses with carts, or if we have, the means, we call an ambulance to transport the patient, which costs about 30 to $40. If you can afford it, that helps. If you can't, you have to get on a cart and struggle with it until you get to where you're going. Once we know that there is light in the rooms, then there won't be no need to have firewood in the rooms, and the kids after school will be able to study under the light. John, has EHT considered building a solar plant to distribute energy across Africa? We have built a lot of solar plants around the world. Uh, the problem in Africa is a solar plant it doesn't answer all their needs. Their needs today are that they need 
the energy immediately. And that's where the Enercube, Enerpol comes from. To build solar plants, yes, we can build them. It will take, you know, one, two years, but then you run into the problem of the grid. Distributing the, the, the energy. Correct, and the grid today is, is so fragile that it cannot take more power. Mm -hmm. There have to be a lot of infrastructure needed before that happens. I always look at it like the cell phone. Cell phones in Africa are everywhere. Why? Because they didn't have distributed telephone lines. So mm -hmm. they, they skipped that whole... Oh, right. Everything got skipped. Cell towers went up, everybody's got a cell phone. Mm -hmm. So the same thing will happen now with, with energy. Microgrids is what we create, will be the thing that Africa goes to. There will be some distributed energy, of course, because you need distributed energy for large-scale projects. But the majority today will come from micro-utility as what we're doing hmm. with wind, solar, and battery storage. What about the use of these microgrids in places like Haiti, where they had the devastating earthquake and they had no power, they had no water, they had nothing? It seems like this kind of solution would be a perfect answer in that sort of situation as well. I say this is a kind of generator, easy to move, easy to build everywhere, which can start to produce immediate energy because wherever you have the gasoline generator, there's a people there to transfer the diesel, the gas, by air sometime. And the and, and engine needs a lot of maintenance, so it is a big problem. Mm -hmm. This combination of wind, solar, and battery is something can produce energy now and don't need to do a big, a big job. So micro-generation can be spread everywhere wherever they need the energy. Instead of making the big project, and then waiting for a long time. This is what I learned from the African Congress, African meeting we have together. People talk for the big project and then how to develop the, the distribution line. Right. It's simple, producing energy there. Do it house by house. Now, John, where do you see interdynamic hybrid technology, say, five, ten years down the road? What are you going to be doing then? Well, I see, Jackie, I see interdynamic moving forward in the, in the industry, creating value for our investors, number one, but also for our people and our people that we work with. I see that we'll be able to get rid of diesel altogether. So diesel will be a, a thing of the past. So people will create all of their energy, whether it be solar, wind, and battery, or one, one of the combinations thereof, that will be, that is the future. Hmm. Now you mentioned investors. Now EHT, is your stock symbol, correct? Correct. EHT is a public company. So we're, we're always, uh, you know, our investors are, and when we were grateful for them for providing us the equity capital that we need to move into these projects. Now, Mario, I understand you also have an opportunity for viewers, for everyone really, to sponsor a village. How do they do that? Yes, this is exactly what we can do in our social network. Everybody can share with us this beautiful story and help us to change the life of some village. So they can do sponsor with a, a small donation and we can show them where their money goes to change the life of these people. Simply they can go to our website, ehthybrid.com, and they can see everything they can do to share with us this beautiful story. Fantastic. My name is Kumbaso and I am stationed at Lumbi's health center. I work for the people of Lumbi. This is the health center, and I can tell you about all the difficulties we encounter here. It is a great benefit to have electricity here. When you have a patient who requires admittance or you have a pregnant woman coming to term and there is no electricity, you know how challenging that could be. There are some of the reasons why electricity is very much needed around here. This is big for the village. I am very happy with the work that is being done, and the whole family is happy. It is a wonderful thing that we are getting electricity, but it is not enough if it doesn't reach the neighboring villages. First you get to Lumbi, then you reach nine other localities that depend on us and that are a part of Lumbi. We want them to experience the same happiness we are feeling today. My last question, Mario, is how can our audience follow your installation and development projects coming up in these third world countries? 
as John said, in the next five or ten years, our, our, our commitment is to develop the our project and to make our dream come true, which is working for the our investors, for the, for the incoming, of, of, of course, but we are looking also to make the people changing their life. And this is what we're going to deliver also to, to the audience. We are going to use Facebook, we are going to use our website, we are going to use all the social networks to deliver our solution. We like to start today for the long work to do together because every single village we bring the energy, every single family we bring the life is our common target. We have a, business, we have uh, investment, we have, uh, of course, financial result, but we also have our social engagement. Our families, all the team in EHT and, and Dynamic are very excited about this. We want to share with all the people this kind of achievement. So we are going to put on our social network, on our website, what we do day by day. Every project, we want to show one village before, and one village, one hour after. And one see hour. the people, exactly. And see how the people are happy. With something which is simple. It's not a big a rocket science. It's a simple. That's what we want to show on our social network. Amazing. Well, it looks like interdynamic hybrid technologies, or EHT, is really helping the world become a better place. So thank you for sharing all this with us. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. And if you'd like to sponsor a village, you can just go to their website at ehthybrid.com and check it out. They'd love to have your help. I'm Jackie Bales. Thanks for watching. <laughs>